Hi, it's Chewing Tuesday. Just going to have a chat about chewing. Seeing I've had a few inquiries and a few clients who've got um, a few issues with their dogs chewing. Firstly, puppies. Every puppy chews. It's an absolutely normal part of their development and something that they will transition through. Uh, you need to be aware that when you bring a puppy home, you need to make sure that your environment is safe and appropriate for a puppy. So get rid of those power cords, make your environment safe, and just use your common sense about you know what's around, what's at their eye level, what they can get grab hold of. So when we're talking about chewing issues, puppy-related chewing issues are a little bit different to older dogs. I deal with the puppies first. So, you know, puppies pick things up in their mouths. That's how they explore their environment. So just make sure that you're using toys that suit your dog and their breed characteristics. Uh, there's an untold amount of toys on the market. So, you know, you can do your research and find what your dog likes and give those things to them to chew, obviously. If they're teething and they've got sore gums and they're just wanting to gnaw on everything to get some relief from sore gums, then, you know, my tip would be freeze some carrots and some long green beans and give them those. That gives them lots of relief from their, you know, sore gums and gives them something to chew on. Then, you know, they're not going to destroy your house. So, you know, puppies need to be a little bit, you know, patient with that one. When we're talking about older dogs who chew, uh, you know, I, you have to ask yourself, why is my dog chewing? Is it a particular thing that they're a little become a little bit fanatical about? I have lots of clients who are staffies and they are extreme chewers usually. So often, you know, a client will present with a staffy who has started to chew their way through the timber decking. Often that's because, you know, that's where the barbecue is. So the the all of the you know juice from the barbecue the scent, and what start off, starts off as a few little licks of the timber progresses really quickly into them demolishing, you know, an upright of your timber deck if you're not careful. So be aware if you've got a dog and it hangs around the deck area or where you, you barbecue and they're really interested in the timber and they're sniffing and licking it. You know, you might think that's amusing and nothing to really be worried about, but it can quickly develop into chewing that timber. So, you know, having things like, you know, Kong toys, uh, this is probably, at, this is an extreme. So these are for the staffing. Have a hole in the end and you can stuff it with, you know, I tend to suggest you put a bit of peanut butter or some of that liquid cheese in there and then stuff some treats in there, um, some vegetables like um, beans and peas and carrots. So, you know, some mix of, some mixed veg in there and then throw it in the freezer and freeze it. So have a couple of them on hand and get them out, especially if you've got a staffy and you're barbecuing, and then, you know, get them interested in something away from what you're doing. That's, that's a really good uh, toy to use. So these red ones are for, you know, breeds that aren't as extreme chompers as the staffies. Um, probably, your, you know, your water collies, your smaller, smaller companion breeds. This is a small breed size, so they come in a range of sizes. So just do your research with which one's gonna suit you. The other thing is, you know, when you've got a dog at home and you've left a ton of toys out on their, on your, you know, your grassy area out in your yard, you know, if those toys aren't moving, they're not really very interesting to a dog. So what we need to do is get them thinking about how they can create the their own fun with their own belongings. So I like to teach dogs to push a ball themselves and create their own kind of soccer fun if you like. So you can get all sorts of different balls and bits and pieces. Um, this is this is one that was given to me and um, is one of my dog's favorite. So you can have a soccer ball, pop a treat under here and the dog needs to push the ball to get the treat. And then you can get them to do more repetitions of that behavior until they're pushing a ball around and amusing themselves. That's a really good game that they can play on their own. Chewing um, 
can be replaced by an engagement game with your dog. So using a tug toy. So this is one of the tug toys that we have here. And um, Bungie, really good when you're slightly elderly like me. And a toy with lots of movement in the end of it. So that they become really interested in it. So I always suggest to people when you're playing with a dog with a tug toy, you present the end of it on the ground. Right, so that your dog always has four feet on the ground. But getting your dog to follow movement and play with you in an engaging manner, awesome. Absolutely one of the best things ever. Has to be one of my favorite things to do with my dogs. So, um, you know, spending time with them, playing with them, using a toy as a prop, cannot recommend it enough. The other thing you can do, get, the, get them to use their brain, I really like this game, this is a tennis ball game, usually have it available in most of my classes and what we do here is we pop a treat under a couple of different balls and then you, the dog works out how to get the treat out from under the balls. So they have to use their nose, use their brain and work it out. It's really good fun watching them all work out at their own personal technique for doing it. Okay, so. That's pretty much my suggestions to help with chewing. Uh, if it is ex excessive chewing and none of those suggestions help, then you know, give me a ring or send me a message. I'd love to hear from you. Okay, good luck.